Three, two, one. Okay. Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, special MOA webinar. With I'm here with uh, Dr. Parag Sanchiti, President of Maharashtra Orthopedic Association, and Dr. Shiva Shankar. So uh, let's begin with uh, Dr. Sanchiti talking about MOA webinars and uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ashok Sham, for setting this up. So this is, again, one of the MOA webinars, which is uh, uh, an initiative of uh, the MOA research cell, which was set up about eight weeks ago. Uh, I think these MOA webinars are picking up. This is fifth in the series, and we've had some interesting uh, MOA webinars in the past. Today, we have with us none other than our dynamic past president of MOA, Dr. Shiv Shankar, who will be sharing with us uh, his huge experience in proximal femoral nailing. The topic which he's going to speak to us on today is how to avoid common mistakes while doing the proximal femoral nail. So, Shiva, we welcome you to this uh, MOA webinar series and uh, uh, we thank you for joining in. As you know, he's been the past president of MOA and is also the Vice Presidential Candidate for the forthcoming IO elections. So, Shiva, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. And uh, before Dr. Shiv Shankar, I would like to welcome all of you to this MOA webinar and want to request you to register for the forthcoming uh, MOA Con meeting, which is in Pune from 1st to 4th of November at the JW Marriott. This is the 35th uh, annual meeting of the MOA Con, and this program has uh, been planned in detail by the team uh, Pune who is going to host the MOA con this year. So I welcome all of you for the MOA con and request you to register for this meeting in case you haven't. So with this few introduction, uh, introductory words, I now hand over to Dr. Shiv Shankar to tell us more about how to avoid common mistakes in proximal femoral nailing. Over to Dr. Shiv Shankar. Thank you, sir. Welcome, uh, Shiv Shankar, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Parak Sanjayji, sir, President of Maharashtra Orthopedic Association, as well as Dr. Ashok Sham, sir, uh, who has been the main brain behind this uh, Ortho TV Live. And this is the second time I am here again on this uh, Ortho TV in this uh, two months' time. Coming to my topic, uh, I've been doing PFN for the past 20 odd years and uh, I have done a lot of mistakes and I have learned from my own mistakes and many people share their WhatsApp pictures with me and uh, analyzing those, I have compiled this uh, short talk on uh, how to avoid common mistakes and Yes, sir. The next slide is not going. Okay. Near it, okay. Yeah, it is going now. Yeah. Okay, this is one of the pictures shared by one of uh, my friend. Uh, this is the first case of PFN he did after seeing some live surgeries of uh, PFN done in one of the workshop in a conference. And uh, Ashok, yes, sir. Uh, uh, this is not working, means animations is not working. All the animations have come suddenly. Okay, just Shall go I back go to back your back first picture? slide. Huh? Go back okay. to your first slide. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, see, all the animations have come instead of coming serially. Okay. okay. Anyway. Yeah. Because uh, some of the slides, uh, some excess will be overlapping. I will be missing those excess if the animation is not working. Shall I switch it off and try it again just for a minute? Yeah, sure. Close it. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. You can Sorry, close all the PowerPoint. Yeah, that's the PowerPoint. Yeah. Yeah, I should go to stop video or participate. No, show. no. Stop sharing. Yes, sir. Pause. Pause share. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just go back and wish. I should just speak for a few minutes till this goes on. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I think. Uh, uh, while Dr. Shivshankar is just getting the slides right, the animation working, 
you know, once again, uh, I just wanted to remind you about uh, the forthcoming 35th MI Con meeting in Pune. And this is a meeting with the difference. Uh, the organizing chairman for this meeting are Dr. Nitin Bhagli, Dr. Tarne. We have a dynamic organizing secretary, Dr. Govardhan Ingle. Our scientific chairman is Dr. Sandeep Patwardhan, uh, who has been supported well by the uh, Pune Authority Society members. And this will be a meeting which has a lot of new features. There will be uh, TED Talks, there will be uh, technology debates, there will be, you know, on a videos, video hall where you can see all the surgical videos and uh, many more uh, such things during the main conference. There are also nine pre-conference workshops which will be held on Friday the 2nd of November and these are very interesting which will cover all the set of specialities in orthopedics. Also uh, importantly we have the inauguration at 5.30 p.m. on 2nd November followed by Subhubhad Bhave Diwali Presidential Night and then we have DJ Reggae. Also on third evening, we have the Bollywood night at uh, Sunny Lawns, which is about 25 minutes drive from JW, uh, for whom special buses have been arranged. So all in all, it's going to be a very interesting program. So I request all of you, those who still haven't registered, to please register for uh, Go ahead, sir. You can share it now. Yeah. Okay. I think I, th now? I think we have lost Parag, sir. Yeah. So you okay. can go ahead with it. Yeah. Okay. This is one of the pictures shared by one of my friends. Right. Uh, this is the first PFN he has done. And when he shared the picture, yeah, this is working perfectly now. Yeah. Thank you, Shah. Yeah. Uh, this is the picture he shared me. And since this was the first case he has done, I initially said, done beautifully because uh, I know that uh, the first few, few cases are very difficult for anybody to do. But subsequently, I analyzed them. I said there is a virus in the fracture site that should be avoided. This is where the beak of the neck is entered into the distal fragment. Then superior opening of the fracture site is there and that has led to the virus actually. You can see that nail has been shoveled at the fracture site and also there is slightly longer screws that I will be analyzing later on. So because of the virus, the leg becomes horizontal and the screw automatically becomes slightly longer. Then superior screw is comparatively longer. It has gone almost up under. Normally, this is a, a line at which the superior screw should stop so that both the screw can take the load simultaneously. So this superior screw longer will cause the problem of either the superior screw breaking or the Z effect. Then peak of the proximal fragment entering into the distal medullary canal. Many a time, we all orthopedic surgeons who have been doing DHS feel that a diamond distal type of osteotomy where the peak of the proximal fragment entering into the distal fragment is a stable reduction, but that is a very wrong notion. In a intramedullary implant, if your beak is inside, that indicates that it's varus. You should never accept a varus like this. So these are some of the points which we could make out in the immediate post of x-ray. Another case is yes, you can see that the patient has been operated and the distal fragment has been fixed in internal rotation because that was the position in which the patient, uh, the reduction was obtained by the surgeon. So without realizing that the distal, uh, the limb is in internal rotation, the distal locking has been done. So this patient had to be treated with uh, removing of the distal locking screw and again doing a, uh, another locking. One more X-ray picture shared again on a WhatsApp group. This surgeon said that the distal part of the long femoral nail, which he used for a plain subtrochanteric fracture, was abutting against the distal uh, cortex and he had a lot of trouble in inserting the nail and he ended up in creating a small crack at the distal uh, interlocking hole side. That's what he told me on the WhatsApp picture. After seeing this picture, I asked him to send me a proper AP and lateral picture of the thigh. And I predicted that this is probably a wrong side nail being used. You can see that you have used the opposite side nail as the instead of nail curvature matching the femoral bone, it has actually caused wrong thing. So this, uh, instead of uh, keeping the curvature anteriorly along with the femoral bone, he has 
kept it posteriorly to the distal part of the nail was upper teeth. Finally, he treated this uh, fracture by removing of the nail and renailing was done. Unfortunately, you can see that he ended up having a complete fracture of the distal fragment in this re-surgery. So these are all iatrogenic problems just because of wrong side nail was used in this case. So distal tuberal fractures normally goes into hyperextension. So this has to be tackled properly. This is a sequential tuberal fracture. And this is what I am telling. The first slide shows the distal fragment going to hyperextension. So in such cases, what we have to do is, again, in this segmental fracture also, you can see that it has gone in hyperextension. I am trying to lift that intestine and pin, getting the alignment right, then passing the nail and the guide were very anteriorly and getting the reduction properly without having any recurvatum deformity. This is very, very useful, especially if you are operating these fractures, especially distal femoral fractures on an orthopedic table. So, this is the final x in the same patient, which it did subsequently extremely well. Another case came last year to me for implant removal. This nailing was done about 20 years back here only in Sholapur at some, some place. And you can see that here are encircled. The nail, again, the wrong side nail has been used. It's not the wrong side nail because this is a universal nail. Instead of rotating the nail along with the femoral curvature, it has been put in reverse fashion. And on the right side, after the implant has been removed, a dead lateral feature of the femur shows that the anterior bow has been lost, totally lost and the femur has become straight because of this mismatch of the nail within the bone. Friends, newer technique has a learning curve. So we have to learn the technique properly and by learning the technique properly, we can minimize the complications. And unfortunately, interlocking nailing has a long learning, learning curve and we have to be used to seeing the picture on a, a CM picture and operate on a patient. Uh, that is a little difficult uh, thing to do simultaneously, analyzing the fracture and displacement. This is a very busy slide, but I call them all of them as some avoidable complications or avoidable mistakes, like incomplete reduction or fixation and distraction, incomplete length of the screws, incorrect insertion of the tumoral neck fractures, problem with the distal nail locking, fracture of the lateral wall of the greater trochanter due to during insertion of the nail, lateral protrusion of the screw due causing thigh pain, tumoral shaft fracture of the nail tip, intraarticular migration of the screws, anterior thigh pain. There are so many. I have seen many, many, many number of complications and it's very difficult to describe all of them. But if you are doing nailing regularly, it's better to have your own set. Because with your own set, you know all the instruments properly and you will be knowing which one to be used when. And with a lower set, Many of the time, some of the instruments are missing. They might be very, very useful and critical for the surgery. And those instruments, if they're bad, that causes frustration during surgery to operate on these patients. So it's better to have your own set and have knowing the instruments and implant by your own. You should know all the instruments and implant properly before carrying out the surgery. Some of the important things for any intramedial nail is reduction. The anterior reduction and the medial reduction. They are the foremost thing. Implant is just a tool in your hand. You can use any of the nails available in the market and you can get beautiful uh, result out of them if you know the technique properly of getting the reduction properly. So reduction is very very important. Coming to the screw position. The next screw has to be in the AP picture centered to inferior. If it is a single screw system or if it is a two screw system like TFL, it has to be using the calcar. The cervical screw it should be as inferior as possible so that the superior screw has more place to, to be placed in the neck properly. In the lateral picture, it has to be central or slightly posterior because that's the part where the bone is very strong. The nail at the entry side should be outside the cortex at the piriform viscosa or medial to the piriform viscosa where the nail enters, nail has to be outside. If the nail tip is inside the neck, then it can toggle and can cause displacement of the nail and displacement of the fracture. 
So if the system you are using is not handicapped, then it's better to leave the male longer outside. And if the system you have uh, have different sizes end caps, always try to use a end cap either five millimeter or zero millimeter, ten millimeter, whichever one which causes the nail to be slightly outside at the entry side. Then the screw should be subcondral. If you are using a single system, if, if the screw is in the AP in the center of the neck, then the tip apex distance will be less. But if you are using a two screw system like PFM, the screw will be inferior in the neck, the cervical screw. So it's better to measure the subcondral distance from the articular surface. It has to be within less than 10 millimeter from the articular surface. And another thing is, if you are using a PFN A or a Halifax nail or a Gamma nail, the number 5 mark here, the screw has to be slightly outside the bone by about 3 to 5 millimeter. If the screw is inside the medullary canal, then the screw cannot back out. Some of the, some of the time, the hole in the bone will mismatch with the screw to come out and jamming of the screw happens within the bone. So to prevent that, it's better to keep the screw slightly outside in this fashion. I will show a reduction properly how to do. This is an elderly lady of 75 or 75 years old. The fracture is already two weeks old. And you can see the top x-ray that the neck was not reduced properly in lateral feature. So with a steam pin, I have manipulated, got the reduction, fixed with two KVS, then I have adapted and made an entry in this case. So this is the final picture of the same patient. On the right corner, you can see I am trying to insert an end cap. If the nail is inside the bone, the nail can toggle. So that's why we have to extend the length of the nail by inserting an end cap. That is the reason why I showed this slide here. This patient had a very bad postural cortex where I have marked in the circle. You can see that there is hardly any bone. But you can see that the patient is walking so comfortably and uh, the patient is walking so comfortably the second post of today just because of the good position I have got I am able to ask the patient to walk the, on this uh, implant. This is one month post operative x-ray showing the position of the implants remaining the same position like the post operative immediate post operative x-ray. This is a three months follow up picture where it shows formation of the bone posteriorly. The posterior cortex was totally absent in the immediate post-operative x-ray as well as in the intraoperative pictures. You can see that as per the wolf law, bone forms where it is required and it gets dissolved where it is not required. Here, around the nail, posteriorly, the bone has formed. This is the picture of the same lady at eight months Beautifully, the fracture has united and the patient is doing extremely very well. This is an example. You can see that the tip of the nail was buried inside the medullary canal. That has caused the distal fragment to move. It's like a DHS moving. The shaft of the, the direct plate of the DHS slides in a high subcutaneous fracture or the lateral wall fracture. Similarly, even a nail can also move more medially inside the medullary canal if the nail tip is not outside from in the at the entry side. That is one of the reasons why I have been insisting that the nail has to be slightly outside at the entry side. Friends, the foremost commonest mistake I see is the varus reduction. This varus reduction is due to mainly due to position of the patient and especially if the patient is empty then this becomes much more problematic. Second cause is entry side problem and I will discuss them in detail subsequently. The second problem I normally encounter when I see an x-ray is inability to pass both the screws. The surgeon passes only one of the next screw and is unable to pass the derotational screw. Hence, he just inserts one of the screw and leave comes out of the surgery. This is due to a virus happening, he is unable to pass the second screw properly. This happened to me way back about 15 to 20 years back. But in the last 15 years, it has never happened. Even in Indian implant, I've been able to put two screws properly. If the main cervical screw is very inferior, missing the calcar and it is in the inferior part of the head, then 
the superior stroke can be passed in the center or slightly superior to the center in the AP picture. This is one of the reasons why passing the, the difficulty in passing the second screw has been advantageously taken by some of the companies and they have come out with single screw system. I will discuss about them also in due course of time. So, difficulty in passing both the screws is the second problem. Third commonest problem, what we see is the lateralization of the shaft with altered biomechanics. Patient will be unable to walk because the fracture has united but the shaft has become lateralized and that is the reason why the patient is uh, unable to walk. This is an example. You can see that though there is a cubic symphysis diastasis in this patient that we will uh, not consider at this stage but you can see that the neck of the operative side has become longer. Because the neck has become longer, though it is an intertrochanted fracture is united, but the neck, the shaft has gone laterally and the liver arm of the hip is increased. So normally, if you draw a line from the outermost cortex or the outermost part of the pelvis, it grazes the tip of the trochanter or the outermost part of the trochanter. Whereas on the operative side, you can see that it's going at the main entry side, it is going almost one inch of the trochanter is outside this line. Next commonest problem I encounter is long screws. If you are using screws of 400 millimeter in length, especially in people or patient less than six feet tall, then there is something wrong. Majority of the reason is it is traction not released properly. To get a good traction, we apply, to get a good reduction. We apply traction on table and unfortunately we forget to leave this traction and because of this uh, traction, the neck, the fracture gets distracted and the neck length appears longer and we try to end up using longer screw. As you can see in this case, a longer screw has been used. So if you are using a screw which is more than 100 millimeter, it's always better to confirm that really the patient is very, very tall and you can see the opposite side hip also in the x-rays and also confirm that you have released the traction properly and compacted the fracture properly. So these are some of the reasons for using a long neck. Friends, longer screws can lead to Z-effect. I have talked in the last webinar about the Z-effect and how to avoid. So I am not going to the details of uh, uh, the Z-effect here. But the reason why the Z-effect happens is once this longer screw, the traction is released, the patient starts walking. Both the screws comes out of the lateral cortex at the entry side of the screws and they start dropping in and out. And one of the screws tries to go in and one of them comes out that will cause the Z effect. You can uh, see this webinar in the, in the archives of the same site or also on my YouTube, I have posted this uh, video of uh, how to avoid Z effect. I just recapitulate the steps of surgery quickly. This is a cracked fracture, undisplaced fracture, but even then I fix them with two KOS anteriorly before making an entry. By fixing these two KOS anteriorly, when I make an entry with the reamer after putting the guide wire, guide pin, the fracture will not open superiorly. Otherwise, an undisplaced fracture, the, when you are putting a 15 or 16 millimeter reamer of the in, uh, instrument, then it gradually opens leading to virus. That's why I always fix these fractures with two KOS which are placed very anteriorly. Other advantage of fixing this fracture with two KOS are you can adapt the fracture. Once you can adapt the fracture, your entry site becomes very, very easy, especially in a, a obese patients. So even if the fracture is reduced well in adduction, always try to fix the fracture before passing this reamer and then the nail. When you, after passing the nail, before you pass the guide wire, always make a hole in the lateral cortex at the entry site of the guide wire with a hole which comes with the set or with the drill which comes with the set. Uh, because these guide wires are not made for drilling. These guide wires are, they, if you use for drilling the lateral cortex, they bend and go haywire. Some of the time they totally bend, they go anterior, even posteriorly behind the femur and they entirely miss the hole. So it's always better to make a hole in the lateral cortex before we pass this guide wire. Normally, because the trabecular pattern in the femur, 
the inferior guide wire slightly bends upwards and the superior guide wire slightly bends in, in, in uh, downwards. So don't keep on changing this guide wire. It always goes in the same position because that's the path of least resistance. So I will answer in subsequent slides how to tackle these guide wire problems of different and when you are passing the screws, always pass the superior derotation screw because the word indicates that the, it's a derotation screw. When you pass the cervical screw, it has to act as a derotation screw. So always pass the superior. By passing the superior screw, you will get an idea also about the inferior cervical screw, which is very, very important. So you can, without changing or changing to different sizes or lengths of screw, you can use the correct size screw and pass it properly. So, after passing both the screws, you have to judiciously compress the fracture after releasing the distal fracture and then you should do the distal locking. I am a fan of dynamic locking and I may try to do dynamic locking in all these cases. But there are few people who also do static locking and they also do equally get good results. Coming to the topic, entry side getting lateralized causing the virus. So this is the commonest problem. The entry site for a PFN is tip of the trochanter. Here is an X-ray which I have only operated sometime in 2009. You can see that I have taken the entry to the at the tip of the trochanter, but the bone is very weak on the outer side, or if there is there might be fracture on the outer aspect. So when you try to ream, your reamer gets reaming more on the outer side rather than uh, less on the inner thicker bone. So your reamer becomes lateralized as you can see in this same patient. So this is the commonest problem we face. So I normally advocate in such cases, it's better to go medial to the tip of the trochanter or even from the pyriformis fossa. How this entry gets lateralized? This is the tip of the trochanter entry, a proper entry for a PFN. But when you're reaming, the lateral cortex gets reamed and the lateral cortex becomes weaker and weaker and becomes uh, getting rim more and more and the whole of the entry side gets lateralized in this fashion. So this is uh, how a normal PFN, the, cerve the cervical screw or the inferior screw will be inferior in the head, head neck as well as in the head part. But when the whole of the entry side gets lateralized, as you can see in this picture, when this gets lateralized, the screw which is inferior in the neck will go to the central part of the head or even in the superior part of the head. This is the one of the reasons why your screw position will not be proper because of the entry side getting lateralized. So always go for an entry which is medial to the tip of the trochanter and or even through the pyriformis fossa to avoid this problem of the nail going laterally and the screw. Uh, not coming inferiorly both in head and neck as well as in the uh, neck as well as in the head. By chance, if we are done, what we can do is a different thing, but how we can avoid it? Here you can see that yellow marking has been done where I am pushing with my left hand the reamer more medially so that I will be reaming more the inner side cortex rather than the outer cortex. Here in this case, what we did was we nibbled out a piece of the bone medial to the entry side and then we reamed with the centering down again and passed the nail much more medially. So uh, that's the reason why nowadays I always advocate it's better to go through the pyriformis fossa and not have any problem. If you go through the pyriformis fossa, majority of the problems are solved. Unfortunately, nobody advocates the pyriformis fossa because there is an article which talks about the entry at the pyriformis fossa is done by more than 13 millimeter. There is chances of the circumflex femoral artery getting damaged, which might cause damage to the head of the femur. But friends have seen so many cases. I'm yet to come across a case where a damage has caused a heavy in the femoral head, especially in an adult. The second problem, what we normally see is passing the nails to the fracture side. Friends, in which fracture we pass an implant to the fracture side? 
Why we want just because there is an intertrochantric fracture, we want to shovel the nail through the fracture site. This implant also requires a space. This implant is 15 to 60 millimeter in diameter proximally. You have to make a place for this nail. So you have to lean properly the proximal part of the femur without leaning properly. If you shovel the nail at the fracture site, it normally causes a, a, it works as a spacer and that's one of the causes why the neck, head and neck gets displaced medially and the head and neck goes into varus as you can see in this picture. Here in this picture on the left, you can see that to the fracture side, the surgeon has pushed the reamer. Since there is no contraction for the reamer to ream the proximal canal, the, both the head and neck fragment and the shaft fragments get separated widely and make space for the reamer to go inside without reaming any of the bone. That's another problem which should be totally avoided. Normally, when we fix a fracture on an orthopedic table, once we get a good reduction in this fashion, abduction and external reduction, we normally get a good reduction. And on adduction, what happens is the perineal post stretches against the thigh, and you don't get more adduction than about 20 to 30 degrees in this in these patients. If you try to adduct more than this, if you try to adduct this more than this the fracture opens superiorly in this fashion. So because of the adduction, the surgeon trying to adduct, making the entry side prominent for you to pass the nail, this adduction will cause superior opening even in a crack fracture. And this is one of the reasons why the fracture goes into varus. This widening of the proximal or the entry side becomes. And when you pass the nail, the nail will go into the medullary canal and if you lock in that same position, the head and neck is in varus. You can see that the superiorly, the fracture has opened up and that will lead to varus. That's another thing which you can see in the similar x-ray here. The fracture has gone into varus. Sometimes the surgeon realizes the mistake and he abducts. He realizes that there is a varus of the head and neck. So he tries to get the abduction back. So he abducts the limb. By this abduction, fracture also opens up inferiorly. Earlier, the fracture had opened up only superiorly. Now, the fracture opens up inferiorly also. Though the head and neck angle or the neck shaft angle will be proper, but this fracture has gone into distraction and the implant is acting as a spacer and the neck screw used will be longer in size. This is what is happening in this case. The lateralization of the shaft and the neck of the shaft has become longer in size only because of the implant, which is the surgeon initially adapted the limb, which caused opening superiorly. Then he abducted the limb, which caused inferior opening also, causing the lateralization of the shaft. So this should be also avoided. So this is the same patient where you can see that the, the shaft has become uh, the neck uh, length has become longer and this can be measured from the uh, center of the head. The line on the right side is longer than on the line on the left side. The most important way to measure is normally the greater trochanter, the outermost part of the greater trochanter lies within the pelvis. Means if you draw a line from the outermost part of the pelvis and drop it down to the ground, it grazes through the outermost cortex of trochanter. But on the right side, you can see that it's far, far outside than this. So that is the one which causes the biomechanics of the hip. Though the fracture is united, the biomechanics of the hips have been totally lost. And this patient will be having very difficulty in walking because more power is required because the trochanter and the trochanter is very laterally placed. And the liver arm of the abductor mechanisms are totally lost and this patient will be having very difficulty in walking. Your implant doesn't mean that they can solve the problem. That's why I said that implants are just a tool in our hands. We should know how to use them properly. Here is an example. The TFN A2 has been used. Again, a lateralization of the shaft has been done. You can see almost 1.5 to 2 centimeter then the lateral lateralization of the shaft has happened. Again, confirmed by the blue line, which is inside 
the trochanter is inside on the left side, whereas it is outside on the right side, indicating that shaft has got that light. Whereas also makes the neck more horizontal and therefore functionally longer. And when the body weight is applied, the bion mechanics will be totally lost and the varus forces causes the screw to cut out superiorly. So, varus should be avoided at all the cost. And varus causes relative neck lengthening. How this can be uh, shown? Here is an example, a undisplaced fracture. This is the screw which is used, say X length. Whereas when the fracture is open superiorly, if you use a screw which is X plus A, when you compare the length of the screw, you can see that the one on the right side is a longer screw. That's the reason why I said that if you are using a screw which is more than 100 millimeter, which is means that either your fracture has gone into varus or you have distracted the fracture totally. So a care should be taken to check these things. Recently, a classification which talks about the medial cortical support. They call this as negative medial cortical support, neutral medial, medial cortical support, and the positive medial cortical support. This article, this X-ray shows that it is a negative medial cortical support. The beak of the neck is inside that medullary canal, means it's a negative medial cortical support. Here you can see the beak of the neck is touching the distal segment of the shaft. So it's a neutral cortical support. Here the beak is outside the neck. So this is a positive cortical support. So either you should aim for a neutral cortical support with slight valgus of the head and neck. Our best will be, I normally aim for a positive cortical support with the beak of the neck outside the middle of the canal. So, if the beak is inside the middle of the canal, it's always varus or it's a negative medial cortical support. Try to get either neutral with slight valgus of the head and neck or try to get the beak out with valgus of the neck. So, this article by Chang Zhang et al. talks about this uh, uh, medial cortical support. I, uh, I wish that all of you read this article and understand the principles of the reduction properly. Here is an example where you can see that the medial cortical support is normal, means the shunter's nail is properly seen. But if you see the position of the screw, the screw is kissing the calcar in the neck, whereas this is the central part of the head. That indicates that the proximal portion is in varus. So, though it's a neutral cortical support, neutral medial cortical support, but because of the opening at the entry side, the surgeon has shown the nail at the entry side, you can see that the trochanter has opened, causing the varus of the head and neck. So, if you are aiming to get a neutral cortical support, try to get the head and neck into valgus. This varus should be prevented at any cost. Otherwise, varus of the head is one of the reasons for Z effect. The load, loading of the hip instead of the load, the vector of the load going along the screw to compress the fracture side, it will cause downward push of the head that will cause varus, further varus and one of the screw to come out, especially the inferior screw to come out and lead to Z effect. So, lag screw, another problem with this varus reduction is the the cervical screw or the main cervical screw or the inferior screw get superiorly placed as you can see in this picture and there will be hardly any place for the second screw to place or even if you place them they try to back out because of the poor purchase or they might come out because there is hardly any bone above the, that part of the screw. So this is the first case which is shown where there is a varus reduction this is again due to opening of the fracture superiorly at the entry side. This will cause the downward force, the vector force of the femoral head will be downward or the varus force will be there. And again, here on the right side, you can see the negative cortical support where the beak is inside the medullary canal. Again, that has caused the one of these two to migrate out and the Z effect has already started or set in in this case. Subsequently, this patient landed in a Z effect.
another problem of virus reduction is as i said the screws the vector of the force normally slides along the screws and compress the fractures if there is a virus reduction the head will be loaded in this fashion that will cause the screw to migrate superiorly and migrate outside and gradually they cut out as you can see on the right side the screw has cut out from the head and neck as well as it has migrated laterally so you should avoid virus at all the cost on the left side where i have marked with a circle you can see that the beak of the proximal fragment had gone into the distal medullary canal with a, a bone hook i pulled the beak out and that is the immediate post of the x-ray where the shunter's nail has been maintained very well this was a very badly comminuted fracture so i always advocate you get the beak out on the right side a thick mark is there that is where the beak is outside and the positive medial cortical support is the one which gives the best result this is the same picture where the beak was inside this is the immediate post of the x-ray showing that the beak has been pulled out and there is a neutral medial cortical support with the head and neck alignment proper and in due course of time this is after four months you can see that in such a badly communicated fracture the fracture has healed around the nail beautifully another problem is the longer screw longer screw one of the reason as i said is not releasing the pressure or shoveling the nail through the fracture site without trimming properly let us consider now that the surgeon has done everything properly and he has not released the uh, traction what happens once the fracture collapses when the patient starts walking the fracture collapses that will cause the screw to come out once a part of the screw is outside the bone it has got the space to rock in and rock out and that will cause loss of purchase of the threads of the screws in the osteoporotic head and then one of the screw gets stuck or jammed and another screw will come out and again causes the z effect so always try to compact the fracture beautifully on table after releasing the fracture so that the screw head will be touching the lateral cortex here is an example this is the immediate post of the x-ray you can see that the screw has already backed down and the beak has gone into the medial canal and this patient subsequently went into a z effect because of just the screw backing out because of not releasing the traction the same earlier x ray just to explain how it happens this is the fracture when the patient starts walking the fracture compresses and the screw starts coming out in this fashion the screw heads which have come out in this fashion they are the one culprit if the screw is touching the lateral cortex then they don't rock in and out and here they are free to move in and out or especially if the patient is sleeping on that side or even the tensor fascia lata it gets entangled and the movement of the tensor fascia lata itself can push in or pull out the screw and that causes loss of purchase of the screw and the screw starts walking out so this has to be avoided this toggling of the screw in the nail is another cause for the z effect and you can see the what i have been explaining has happened in this case the superior screw has migrated inside and the inferior screw has migrated outside just because the screw was the fracture was not compacted on table or the screw was longer on table friends that's the reason why i advocate all of you to compact the fracture beautifully on table how i do that compaction let me show some of the pictures this is the immediate uh, this on the left down you can see the picture of a interpretative fracture this is the on table of the picture i am even such a beautiful reduction i am trying to fix the fracture with two tears which are very anteriorly placed then i am adapting the limb see the entry with the guide pin i am making it's needed to the tip of the trochanter almost from the piriform mesosa then i am using the reamer which is going straight down the medullary canal and this is the immediate post operative picture in the same patient i have released the traction on table and compacted the fracture and this is the left side 21 316 is the image after three months the picture when you can see the lines both the lines from the outermost part of the pelvis they graze the lateralmost cortex of the greater trochanter that indicate that the fracture has not opened up the screw you can see that screw heads of this fracture has not come out because 
I have compacted the fracture beautifully on table. There was no place for the fracture to further collapse and the screw to slide out. So you had to compress the fracture on table. How I compress the fracture? I will show a video subsequently. But before that, let me talk on some of the newer implants available in the market and how you can compress with them. Friends, these are all my personal view. It might be contradicting to what everybody understands or the market says. But I always say that there is always a commerce involved in selling this implant because the hip implants market is a very huge. Everybody wants to have his own share. That's why everybody has come out with their own implants in the market. It's a common belief that anything newer is better. The PFN came back long time back, sometime in 86, 87. The PFN came into the market, the Tama nail came into the market, and PFN sometime in 94 came into the market, and in India it came in 97, 98, and I have started using in 99. So, when compared to PFN, which is more than 20 years old, almost 20 years old in India, there are PFN A2, then ZNN, Pigeon nail, then the newer PFN, uh, PFN which has come in the market, advanced PFN. Everybody thinks that they are better, but I will prove what is required for us as a surgeon. Here is a PFN A2. Why I don't like it? Here is an intertrochanteric fracture in a young adult. I was using this implant. See the white arrow as well as the dark arrow. Dark arrow is at the collapsible segment of the helical blade. It's about 5 to 7 millimeter you can collapse at the end of the surgery. So when I collapse the surgery, I, when I collapse the helical blade, you can see that the helical blade is withdrawn because this fracture didn't read 5 millimeters of collapse also. This was so beautifully reduced on table. There was hardly any combination. This was a young adult. So this patient did not require any collapse. So while collapsing, you can see that the screw has come back losing the purchase it had. So, I don't understand why the company has a nail or a helical blade which only allows 5 or 7 millimeters of collapse. If I require 10 millimeter collapse, how I can do it? I do, it's not possible with this nail. If I require 15 millimeter collapse, I don't think it is possible to do it. Here I have used a PFN A2 in a subcutaneous fracture. Why I require a collapse of the helical blade, you tell me? So I am losing the purchase. There is no collapse happening. But when I uh, compact this helical blade, I lock the helical blade. So the screw comes back by 5 to 7 millimeter. The helical part comes back to the shaft by 5 to 7 millimeter, losing the purchase which had in the osteo, supposed to be having the, in the osteopod hole. So I don't understand why these company people say that I have to compress the fracture only by 5 millimeter or 7 millimeter. I am the surgeon, I have to decide. With a PFN, I can decide how much to compact. I can compact 5 mm, 6 mm, 7 mm, 10 mm, 20 mm, 21 mm, like that. But with the helical blade, I don't have any control. Even the helical blade, they say that in an osteoporotic bone, it hardly removes the bone. See, one of the picture is at 3 years, the screw was properly positioned. At 4 years, it started coming out. At 4 years, where, where I have marked round, it has removed so much of bone. You can see a dark spot. It's supposed to not remove any bone, but this nail also or this blade also removes a lot of bone when it is being inserted. And another thing is, you don't get a sensation when you hammer this screw inside the bone. You don't get the feeling of this bone, the quality of the bone, especially in an osteoporotic fracture. Whereas when you are compacting with a PFN, when the head touches the lateral cortex, you get a compression happening and you know how much compression is happening and you know the quality of the bone with which you are dealing with. Whereas in this, it's totally not possible to have any feeling, feedback to the hand when you are using this system. Another new implant in the market is Pigeon Nail. The inferior screw is having a differential threads when compared to the superior thread screw. So, when you pass the inferior screw, the superior screw thread comes back and the screw uh, slides back. I think it was fractured to collapse. But 
in this system, you can start with 0 or 10 millimeter or 15 millimeter. If I want 5 millimeter, I am unable to use this system. If I want 7 millimeter compression, I am unable to use this system. Either with 0 means you don't compress the fracture in a sub like subprogramming fracture, or you can use 10 millimeter compression, or you can keep it at 15 millimeter and compress 15 millimeter. So the amount of compression is determined by the implant. As a surgeon, I don't have any control about the amount of compression I can do in these cases. That's one of the reasons why I don't like this Trigen nail also. So I have done a lot of demonstration of these nails. The another nail in the market is ZN. Again, ZN is also similar. If you put a derotational spin above the screw, the cervical screw, then you, ca you cannot put the set screw. When you cannot put the set screw, you cannot combine any of the fracture. So you can compact the fracture and table with the instrument, but once you release that, uh, once the instrumentation is taken out, it gets the screw goes inside and the fracture gets distracted. So there is gamma nail or some few other nails have got a set screw in this which is marked with red arrow, where you can compress the fracture and lock it. Friends, if I compress the fracture as much as I want and lock it, further compression if the fracture requires due to healing is not possible, which is possible only with PFN because whatever you the compression you achieve on table, if there is further compression is required, the screws can still slide back slightly outside. So that is the reason why I like PFN more than any of this newer implant available in the market. Unfortunately, putting two screws like cervical screw and the derotation screw Many of we people find it difficult and hence we become easy prey for this company which sells single screw system. Dr. Amit Rastogi from BHU Varanasi, the head of the department of Banaras Hindu University, he has done a beautiful study of comparing gamma nail, a single screw system with PFN, a two screw system, where the gamma nail failed, 9 out of 10 gamma nail failed, and whereas only 1 out of 10 PFN failed. That is the cervical was 50,000 cycles they were loaded in a bone model. They did it, they did the study. So that's a beautiful, beautiful article which has appeared in Indian Journal of Orthopedic. And that if we know if we read that article, we understand that two screws is always better than one. But unfortunately, as I said, we find it difficult to pass two screws, and we end up trying to put one screw and try to use newer implants which have come in the market which are not even time tested. As you know, the helical blade system of the uh, uh, PFNA2 already has gone out of the market and they have come, with, come out with the advanced TFN where you just hammer the helical blade without getting compressed. The screw itself rotates and enters into the head and gets seated, but there is no compression available in that system again. So that is one of the reasons why I totally uh, against all these newer implants. Why I like PFN is if you can see that the screw heads touch the lateral cortex and against the lateral cortex of the femur, you can beautifully compress the fracture to your satisfaction, whether it is 1 millimeter, 2 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 25 millimeter, whatever the amount of fracture makes for that much amount of compression you can do. Even if the lateral cortex is missing, this is a very badly shattered proximal femur. This, I was doing surgery at Sanjati Hospital. Incidentally, Dr. Parak Sanjati is with us today, the president of the Maharashtra Autobotic Association. This January, I was uh, demonstrating this live surgery. You can see that the lateral cortex was missing. I was using a PFN. And what I did was, I used the nail itself as the lateral cortex. Since there are no lateral cortex, I compressed the fracture against the lateral cortex, the screw head is compressed against the nail, which is the lateral cortex here. Since the lateral cortex is missing, this is immediate post-operative x-ray. You can see there was a medial void. That's why I have got excessive abduction or valgus in the head and neck. And just four weeks post-operatively, Dr. Atul Patel from Sanjay Hospital is the head of the trauma. He shared the picture with me. At four weeks, beautiful, the bone has consolidated. 
this is the reason why I like the effect. So, where there is no lateral cortex, without any worry, you can use the nail itself as a lateral, lateral cortex, not without any necessity to use a TSP or a wire or any screw or any other mechanism, you can use this nail itself as a lateral cortex and compress these fractures. Then why there are so many IM nails available in the market? If PMN is so good, as I say, why there are so many nails available? Friends, as I said earlier, there is more commerce involved. There is a code case which you can all read. This is, I have downloaded from the net. This is a 2006 uh, 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 from USA court. This is the verdict they have given. The Smith and Nephew versus the Synthes, where they have said that the PFN, DFN, and the D-rotation screw, all of them are uh, patented. Nobody should use them or they should be using similar things in the market. That is one of the reasons why we have got so many other nails. Probably once the patent period of this nail, TFM goes uh, in the probably in another few years' time, probably this TFN will come back with a great resurgence and all the newer implants which are available in the market will have a gradual death. That's what I am predicting. Friends, if you are able to put two screws properly in this fashion, the inferior screw should be in the inferior part of the head and neck and also in the uh, head as well as in the neck. Then the superior screw in the center are uh, above the center and best implant available in the market at present. Because two screw surfaces have to cut through. So one screw, if it is there, it can cut the bone and it can come out. But there are two screw surfaces bone interference, then it is very difficult for them to cut through. This is one of my own earlier case, 2006, you can see that I have not laid the traction on table and the screw has come out and this patient I had a Z effect. So not compressing the fracture or not laying the traction on table is another commonest mistake we all should avoid. The same picture which I showed, again this patient also went had a Z effect subsequently because of the screw which is outside. Here is an example. This is a X-ray sometime in 2007 I have operated. You can see a 15 days old fracture in an elderly lady of 75 years. I have done beautiful compression and also the medial beak is outside or there is a positive medial contact. And after 14 months you can see there is no collapse happening. The screw head is still touching the lateral cortex. This is what we have to achieve on table while we are doing surgery so that we, the screw will not migrate and it will not start locking, causing the Z effect. So this is the immediate post of the X-ray and on the picture on the right is the 14 months picture showing that the fracture has been properly compressed and there is no necessity for the screw. How oh, oh, I normally do the screw? Here I have done this is the traction in the leg and I am trying to pop it off. Next screw and that is for alternately. This is the yes. Now I am going back to try to get the cervical screw. Till I am satisfied. Till I am satisfied. Alternately I keep compressing. I get feedback of the of core and compression. Now I am happy I am stopping. This is what is the crux for the getting a good result. It's not the implant. With the reduction and getting a good compression on the table, it is much more important in getting a uh, better outcome rather than uh, having a failure. Here you can see screws which are outside. The patient is pointing that the screws are hurting him on the right hip. And this patient, again, landed a Z effect and the superior screw you can see has broken and the inferior screw has walked into the uh, head. Coming to the another problem, many a time when we pass the guide wire, we don't make a hole in the lateral cortex and the guide wire is not made, the guide wire is not a stiff wire like drill bit, it's a more flexible like a K wire. So they are not able to drill the lateral cortex and they go haywire. Either they go superiorly or inferiorly in the hole also or it might go above or below the nail also. Sometimes I have faced those problems also. So always make a hole in the lateral cortex before you pass the guide wire. And many a time the nail and the teeth upset the 
position of the guide wire in the lateral picture, if you can see the neck properly anteriorly as well as posteriorly, that indicates that your neck screws or the guide wires are obstructed by the nail. And if you want to see the screw, either you can rotate the CR, but don't rotate the neck or the jig. Many times I find that our colleagues, our friends, they rotate the jig. Here you can see the CM has been rotated and the, in the same picture, the same patient in the um, front guide wire is the, actually the K-wire which is fixing the fracture and two K-wires which are behind are, are the guide wires in the head and neck for the screw. Here you can see there is tight bending of the guide wire because the surgeon instead of rotating the CM has rotated the jig. He has just pushed the jig away and is trying to see the head and neck that will cause bending of the guide wire and sometimes the guide wire can break also. That's why you should never turn to turn the jig to see the head and neck guide wire properly. If you have passed the anti-version guide wire, then you can along with the anti-version guide wire, you can rotate the jig so that the anti-version guide wire has a purchase in the head and neck. So you are turning the head and neck as well as the jig simultaneously. That can be done as in this fashion. So the next problem is guide wire breakage. Guide wire breakage is very, very common because especially in the loner's set, they don't change the guide wires. I normally prescribe two guide wires along with the implant to all my patients and at the slightest hint of bending or not properly drilling the guide wire, I just bend them, cut them and throw them in the dustbin because they are not very costly. Because if you have a problem and if the guide wire breaks like this, then you have to spend a lot of time in the OT unnecessary removing it. While removing the guide wire, it's easy during the surgery itself rather than retaining it and trying to retain later. And you have to explain to the patient also that there is a broken guide wire. So all those problems comes. So always try to keep a basket, tarcoscope basket or the disc punch. Uh, don't use a straight uh, artery forceps because the fulcrum is away and it is very difficult to open and uh, catch them. And with a basket of arthroscope you can or a disc punch you can pass the disc punch with the hole in the nail itself and you can open and you can grab the guide wire and pull it out whereas on the left side you can see that the straight artery forceps it's very difficult to open within the nail so it's always better to keep this instrument handy this is the picture demonstrating the same the guide wire broken being tried to remove by a disc punch here this is an x-ray shared by an um, india or by one of my friend where he had lot of problem in drilling and he said that he removed the, uh, he could not uh, drill the guide uh, neck screw properly over the guide wire. So he sent this picture on the in your, you can see here that the nail has been drilled. What happens is when, when you start the drilling, the guide wire has to be in the center of the hole, the oblong hole of for the nail. Sometimes the assistant pushes the nail inside or if you are inserted the nail through a small keyhole incision, the muzzle pushes the nail out. So the guide wire will be eccentrically placed in the hole in the nail. So that is one of the cause for this. So always, <coughs> sorry, always see the position of the guide wire before you start drilling with the step cut drill which comes for the screw. As I said earlier, always use the owl before you pass the guide wire. This is a problem we normally face is the inferior guide wire bends superiorly and the superior guide wire bends inferiorly. This is due to a trabecular pattern, the least resistance area the guide wire passes. Even if you change this guide wire many times, it will keep on going in the same direction. So what you have to do is till the position, the time where the guide wire is straight, you drill over the step cut drill bit, then take out the guide wire, drill this cut out drill bit by another millimeter or, or another uh, say one centimeter, then you pass the guide wire again and you can pass the screw subsequently. This is another instrument that's looking like a cobra hood which can depress the guide wire is also useful. Here you can see this is uh, uh, one of the Halifax uh, nail I was doing instrument is useful in keeping the guide wire depressed. It is preventing the guide wire to go above and this instrument is very very useful. 
always use hand instrument rather than power instrument so if you are drilling with the power instrument you will not know the resistance if it is a drill the guide wire is not properly positioned the resistance is not properly felt by if you are using hand instrument that on my own case you can see that the guide wire on the screw going properly then i read the guide wire was are not straight and i immediately took the guide wire and it was because the position in the lateral picture was not proper i had eccentrically placed the guide wire and i tried to drill that because i was using a hand instrument i could recognize and pull this out otherwise probably if i was using a power instrument this would have been a disaster the screw guide wire removal would have been a, another major surgery in this case so in osteoporotic fracture i don't think we require power system and drill and the handle which comes with the set is more than sufficient to drill this uh, drill step cut drill bits as well as the reaming is whatever is required and reverse are more than sufficient coming to some problems with the subtrochanteric fracture i think we are already too late i'll try to finish in another 5 10 minutes especially obese and narrow middle leg canal and uh, this patient the nailing has been done you can see the nailing should have gone in the direction where the white line is there but unfortunately abduction flexion deformity is very very common and varus is also another problem which is very very common in these cases this is all due to guide wire we try to enter the guide pass the guide wire in the medial part of the proximal canal and that will lead to varus at the of the proximal fragment and subsequent problem here is a very hefty lady again it has high subtrochanteric fracture the entry was made with the nail but unfortunately it hit the medial cortex and there was a uh, hypogenic fracture of the medial wall and subsequently it had to be treated with a 95 degree richard split uh, when you do a subtrochanteric fracture keep the guide wire parallel to the lateral cortex in ft and parallel to the anterior cortex in lateral then only open the middle canal with the reamer which comes with the set don't go medially if they go medially then the fragment proximal fragment will always go into varus so if the keeping the nail parallel to the lateral cortex is the crux of this uh, subtrochanteric fracture we always say the red line is for the intertrochanteric fracture and the green line for the, the subtrochanteric fracture that is from the medial to the tip of the trochanter but for me it is from the piriformis fossa which is much more common even if you go medial to the tip of the trochanter many a time we slip into the piriformis fossa there is no harm in taking the entry for the piriformis fossa this is another instrument a curved out which is very very useful keeping your guide wire parallel to the lateral cortex proximal into varus is one of the commonest problem with the subtrochanteric fracture that is due to huge perineal force i tried to use a smaller perineal post against the opposite side is still to velocity and i you know pass a skin man pin as a joystick assistant adducts and internal rotates then i'll pass the nail from the top and uh, this is how it was the the skin man pin adduction entry for the piriformis fossa reaming parallel to the lateral cortex and passing in the nail and this is the final x-ray on table so beautiful reduction can be obtained see that the nail is in the lateral cortex another demonstration is done in dator again you can see that you can see that the nail is in the lateral part of the uh, proximal canal this is what happens if you take the tip of the token the nail will hit with and it can cause uh, progenic fracture a short nail and a thinner nail can go into the distal middle leg but a thicker nail will cause hydrogenic fracture this was a high subcortical fracture you can see that the tip of the trochanteric entry and the entry has been done reaming has been done beautifully while the nail was being passed you can see that there is a hydrogenic fracture happening in, and a butterfly fragment coming out and that had to be treated with a uh, 25 centimeter pfm so the entry for this nail I always consider it as periformis fossa instead of taking a uh, tip of the trochanter. If you should take the tip of the trochanter entry, you can see that the nail, the distal part of the nail is not in the middle canal. But if you take the proximally, the entry of the periformis fossa, the nail can superimpose over the bone 
beautifully without any problem. Also see the position of the cervical screw. The, where the piriformis entry is taken, the neck screw position is inferior in the neck as well as in the head, whereas on the right, where the tip of the token entry is taken, the cervical screw which is fishing the calcar has already gone in the center of the head. Another problem is a longer PFN if you are using, uh, then it will hit the middle quadrant. If you take the tip of the token entry, unless you have to war remit, or if you take the piriformis entry, you can see that beautifully it can enter into the middle canal without any problem. This article it talks about injury to medial circumflex if the entry is more than 30 meter is the one which we are worried. But friends, they have not seen any problem of AVN by taking an entry with the 15 or 16 millimeter reamer with PFL. So I boldly advocate you to use the same technique and you can use for subtrochanteric fracture or even intertrochanteric fracture the white knife or the Q-Shankar's entry or the piriformis entry in this fracture. Here is a fracture sharp even in the proximal third, the piriformis entry taken. See the position of the screw which are beautifully placed. Another sharp the piriformis entry is taken beautifully positioned of the screws and the reduction you can see. This is a fracture again operated last year, two years back, 2016 at the Sanjati Hospital during the Pune trauma course. You can see by taking a piriformis fossa entry, I am able to pass a 16 millimeter thick nail in such a narrow middle lake canal. So, so that's the advantage of taking a piriformis fossa entry, which is directly in line with the middle lake canal. So you can pass a thicker nail without compromising on the thickness of the uh, nail. Otherwise, if from the tip of the trochanter, probably I have to use a 8 or 9 millimeter size nail instead of using a 11 millimeter size nail. Position of the screw is also very, very important. Uh, the cervical screw should be either in the center or slightly inferior. I would like to be as inferior possible, that's fine. Then, if the only disadvantage of taking a piriformis entry is some of our Indian nails becomes too proud and the patient might complain of problem in the neck or that, that might cause, especially in a shorter neck ladies, that will cause some problem while sitting cross leg. So I have recently designed a nail which is shorter by 15 millimeter, which can be used on any of your system which are you are already using. So without changing the jig, it's only an additional conical bolt and a 15 millimeter washer and the newer nail, which is 15 millimeter shorter, proximally can be used. So at the end of the surgery, we just take off this washer and that's all. So we apply the washer and make a regular size nail. And after the surgery, this washer, which is there, 15 millimeter size is removed. You can see that the nail is shorter by 15 millimeter and it is fitting perfectly. Especially in central India, this nail is required because the Ladies, there are the sickle cell disease is one of the reasons why they have got the proximal part of the femur very short and this is being used extensively in that part. I had the opportunity to use only in two cases, though I have done this modification. And uh, see that the nail is above the entry side, otherwise again it will drop. The fixation within the entry bone is also very, very important. That's very, very important. Otherwise, the rocking of the nail will cause massive punches. Friends, to conclude, not releasing the traction before distal locking, distraction, not using owl for distal locking, missing a locking hole. The list is never ending. There are so many things I can keep on talking, but I have already worked on the time by almost 30 minutes. So I want to conclude. So always operate without skipping any steps. Each and every step time, it is very important. Recently, I did a test, a high subtrocking refractor. You can see with a steam and pin, I asked the assistant to adapt, made an entry from the piriformis fossa, going parallel to the lateral cortex, guide wires passed, superior screw is passed first, inferior screw is passed second, fracture, traction is released, compaction of the fracture done, then distal locking done. So, each and every case, if you follow this systematically, then there shouldn't be any problem and the patient. This is the immediate post of the X-ray, which is so beautiful. Yes, to put 
we will decide. Normally, we will be putting our 50% of the weight, but as the pin is loading more than that. So, I would like to conclude, as Dr. Parak Sanjati said, once again, to invite you all from 1st to 4th November to JW Marriott in Pune for the 35th annual conference of the Maharashtra Automatic Association that the MOACON. We have nine pre-conference workshops and we have two orations and jam-packed uh, program and also spouses program, so many entertainment program, everything has been planned. These are some of the uh, executive members and the organizing committee which are working hard for this uh, conference. I would like to thank, uh, mention again the President Dr. Parak Sanjati, the Vice President Dr. Yashwant Gade from Aurangabad and the Treasurer, Secretary come Treasurer Dr. Parak Prakash Sigedar from Jalna along with all the executive members as well as the web webinar in charge Dr. Ashok Sham. You can register this for this conference online you can visit www.moacon2018pune.com welcome to pune for this conference i thank you very much and if there are any questions i the dr Par, uh, ashok shwam Sham will be asking me i am ready to answer thank you very much thank you very much sir i think that was a really extensive ashok? yes sir are so, there any questions uh, I think this was a really extensive webinar. Hello? Just a minute, sir. No voice. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, any questions? Yeah. Uh, so I think this was a really extensive webinar and you covered most of the queries that everybody will have in their minds. Uh, there was one query by Dr. Lakshya Rathod about the reduction maneuvers in these fractures. Yes. So he is asking about which is the standard method and are there any uh, easy practical ones? See, the standard method is uh, keep the patient on an orthopedic table, abduct, external rotate, then give traction, adduct in the inter rotate. That majority of the cases, fracture gets reduced. But I try to use a Steenman pin because uh, major, even though you get a reduction, you have to get 100% reduction. Even if the neck is slightly displaced anteriorly or posteriorly, the loss of contact is too much because anteriorly there is 25% loss and posteriorly another 25% loss means there is 50% loss of contact. So I try to insert a Steenman pin into the fracture site and I normally reduce them percutaneously. Yeah. Right. And uh, that video is also there on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. The uh, last web webinar I have shown that video. That's why I don't want to show it again. I didn't right. show that again. Yeah. Right. So I think a uh, lot of questions will pour in tomorrow or day after. And yeah. uh, we have very less time for interactions okay. at this point of time. So. I, will, I, I would like to ask you since you do a lot of research. Yeah. Uh, whether I was too much critical. Saying that the newer event was uh, our bad uh, PFL. I might to you, Ashok. Uh, because uh, I, because uh, I explained why I like PFL. Because I can compress, I can use it as a lateral wall. I can, I feel the compression happening I, with my finger. All those explanation I given. But whether I was too critical in uh, saying that the newer implants were bad. Because I do like them. Because the system is really good. Many a time I use them still. Because uh, passing a single screw saves another, uh, almost 10 to 15 minutes for me also. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what I think your take on this? I think from research point of view, a lot of these new implants are lacking the basic research. Uh, yeah. In right. terms of biomechanics, in terms of virtual analysis, and in terms of uh, even animal experimentation. So most of the things are just been uh, modified from a primary source. And like you said, uh, the primary implant is under copyright. So the modifications are more to overcome the patent rather than to add any additional benefits as such. Yeah, yeah so, that's, I think you are right. Yeah. So I thank you, sir. And 
I believe there are more than a thousand people who have joined us this evening, and yes. uh, I hope everybody has benefited from it. Thank you very much, sir. We'll see you soon again. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Day. Thank you.